How many times have you heard this saying in hockey? He's way too small to play in the NHL. Usually when a player is undersized, everyone doubts whether he can have an impact when it matters most. And then we've seen countless examples of the player proving the entire NHL wrong. It's natural. Hockey's a physical game and the playoffs are a different beast. So how exactly is it possible that a 5'9", 32-year-old became the first undrafted player to win the Conn Smythe since the great one himself? Well, let's take a deeper look. Let's go all the way back to 2011. The big bad Boston Bruins just won the Stanley Cup and the first overall pick was Ryan Nugent Hopkins for the Edmonton Oilers. The NHL was slowly transitioning to speed and skill, but teams were still very set on drafting size. This was also the year that Jonathan Marchessault was draft eligible. And if you were an NHL team, why wouldn't you take a shot on him? In his draft year, he led the Quebec Ramparts in scoring with 40 goals and 95 points in 68 games. That's pretty good, and especially when you see that he led the playoffs with 33 points, he proved that he was a gamer right from the beginning. So why exactly wouldn't an NHL team take a chance? Well, because he's small. A 5'9 winger without game-shattering skill didn't impress anyone, especially when you can get a 6'1 winger who has just as much skill and a little bit more upside. As a result, no one called his name on draft day. But there are certain things that simply get overlooked. Most of the time, it's the intangibles like a player's heart or their compete level. Every step of the way, Marchessault was the type of player to say, I'm going to show you exactly what I can do and prove you wrong. Size is always a hot topic in hockey. The game usually comes easier to bigger players, but with the evolution of speed and skill, size has become less important only if used correctly. As we've seen in the 2023 NHL playoffs, physical teams still dominate the game, yet we still see the brilliance of smaller players. And that's really because if you're small, it doesn't mean you can't be physical and get into the greasy areas where the goals are scored. At March or so size, his hockey IQ has to be off the charts. If you look at this playoff run alone and how he's generated offense, it makes a lot of sense as to how he became playoff MVP. Offensively, if you want to be successful at the highest level, you need to own something called the house. This is where majority of the goals are scored in the playoffs. On this incredible run, almost no one did this better than Jonathan Marshall, which is insanely impressive considering his size. So how does someone who's too small do this? Well, first, it's all about timing. And when you look at Marchessault's numbers for scoring chances and slot shots, they were head and shoulders above everyone in the playoffs. And that's because of his timing and hockey IQ. Take this goal versus Dallas. First off, Marchessault wins a battle off the wall to keep possession. And as Eichel catches this puck, watch Marchessault immediately skate to space and recognize the soft spot in coverage. He anticipates Eichel looking for a pass, so he beelines it to that spot to arrive perfectly for a one-time goal. Marchiso is constantly timing his attacks so that he can hit these pockets of space at the perfect time. But what makes it even better is that he combines this IQ and timing with incredible tenacity to win battles. Watch him take Leon Dreisaitl, who's 6'2", by the way, to the cleaners to force a turnover. As the puck cycles to the point, Marchiso again initiates contact with Dreisaitl, and this bump here ends up clearing a wide open lane for himself for a perfect tap-in. Like I said, Size, if used correctly, isn't an issue. At 5'9", you aren't going to win a lot of battles head-on, but Marchessault knows how to attack defenders' blind spots. Whether it's using his speed and IQ to get behind defenders, or finding a way to beat the defender's stick in traffic, he has dominated this area of the ice. For a 5'9", 183-pound winger, that's extremely hard to do in the NHL playoffs. Of course, this doesn't even include his strong suit, which is his skill. Once he puts himself in position for these grade A scoring chances, he's got the talent to finish on his opportunities. The irony of all this is that he was unwanted at every turn. In the 2017 expansion draft for the Vegas Golden Knights, Jonathan Marchessault was exposed by, funny enough, the Florida Panthers. Florida instead opted to protect their 6'6 center in Nick Bukestad. But it actually gets worse. The Panthers traded the Golden Knights' Riley Smith in exchange for a fourth-round pick and for the Golden Knights to select Jonathan Marchessault. Of course, both Riley Smith and Jonathan Marchessault came back to haunt the Panthers in the worst possible way. 
Jonathan Marcheseau is the first undrafted player to win the Conn Smythe since Wayne Gretzky in 1988. Now, technically, he's the 10th undrafted player to have won the award all time, but the reality is, Marcheseau is the first true undrafted player to ever do so. Gretzky wasn't drafted into the NHL because he signed as a teenager in the WHA and was one of the two players that the Oilers were able to protect when the NHL and WHA merged. All the others come from an era where NHL teams had protected lists or were affiliated with junior teams across Canada. For a guy who was deemed too small for the NHL and wasn't even good enough to be selected at the NHL draft, Jonathan Marcheseau has proven absolutely everyone wrong in the NHL. So what do you think about Jonathan Marcheseau being the first undrafted player to win the Conn Smythe since Wayne Gretzky? As it stands right now, he currently sits as the franchise all-time leader in goals, points, and games played in the postseason. That's not too shabby for an undrafted 32-year-old. Anyways, drop a comment on who you believe is the best undrafted NHL player of all time. I'm not counting Wayne Gretzky, by the way, so you got to show me some creativity in the comments. But as always, if you like this video and want to see more just like it, make sure you click that subscribe button.